Hey hey and welcome to the Rada Explained series. In this video we are going to look at one of Rada's theoretical frameworks for how to describe positions and movements in 3D spaces. These are mostly useful as a tool of visualization while reading. That said, I find his defensive planes useful in training too to help explain a theoretical concept. Let's start off with the horizontal planes. They are used to describe the relative height something happens at, and Rada uses two different sets of them. The first of them being numbered, with one being the ground and nine being the top of the head. The distance between the numbers are not the same, and certain planes have a point of reference. So, one is the floor, three is the knees, and two is the midpoint between those two. 4 is through the hips, 5 at the height of the belly button, 7 is the shoulder, and 6 is in between the belly button and the shoulders, 8 is through the mouth, and 9 is the top of the head. The second set is naming three of these planes, which is the ground, the inferior plane, the fifth plane through the belly button, which he calls the middle plane, and the seventh plane through the shoulders, which is the superior plane. Through his book, he uses both named planes and numbered planes when ref referencing the height of something. For example, saying the guard will be between the fifth and sixth horizontal plane, or the center of the guard is at the middle plane. Next up is the vertical planes. They are used to describe rotation of the fences. In an art with lots of circular steps, it's important to be able to describe how each fenster is rotated in reference to each other. From above, the body is divided by four planes. When these intersect the body, it will create eight horizontal lines. These are both named and numbered. The person is standing with both feet in parallel facing the opponent on the diameter. The diameter divides the person in two equally in left and right. This is the diametral plane. Perfectly dividing the person in the front and back is the vertical plane. In between these two planes are two perpendicular planes that form the 45 degree in between the diametral and vertical planes. These are the two collateral planes. The first line is the right vertical. The second line is the right collateral of the chest. The third is the chest diametral, fourth the left collateral of the chest, the fifth the left vertical, the sixth the left collateral of the back, the seventh the back diametral, the eighth the right collateral of the back. Generally only the chest side lines are referenced and often shortened so it's the diametral, the right collateral, left collateral and the vertical line. The names Named lines are more often used than the numbered, but both are used in his book. There are diagonal planes, but they are not really used, outside of him talking about their existence. The diagonal through his, the face is the common target for cuts. The diagonal through the chest can be used to describe wrist cuts or for diagonal thrusts. Hip to knee can be used to describe the lower defense, and the knee to the foot used when describing knee cuts, which rather only really advises a tactic when using sword and shield. The basic concept of the defensive planes are that when an opponent's blade is outside of these planes, they are no threat to you. The closer you are to your opponent, the further you need to push the blade to keep it outside of your defensive planes. There are three defensive planes, and there are multiple ways to keep the opponent outside of them, either using the guard, the killons, or the blade. The details vary depending on the situation and technique. The left and right plane, seen from above, form a wedge together. When the opponent's blade is kept outside of these, their weapon will safely pass to the side of you. These are the two main defensive planes, and the ones we will focus on. In the next video I will go through the details, since I can't give them justice here. The top defensive plane is above your head, ensuring their sword safely passes above your head. There are a few techniques and situations that utilize it but it is not as important as the other two. 
Lastly, the ground could be seen as a defensive plane as well, but Radan do not talk about it as a defensive plane, and rarely is it utilized in this manner. This was a bunch of everything about the different planes Radan uses in his books. The next video is going to be dedicated to the best part about Radha, his defensive planes.